Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg from Beyond MTHFR, and I'm going to give you some ideas today about what you can do at home, what you can do, um, you know, proactively to improve lung function. This is something that's obviously a big part of the uh, discussion right now, given that um, flu viruses and the coronavirus issue in particular uh, da damages lungs. And so we want to look at what we can do naturally using our knowledge of nutrition and methylation, epigenetics, what's available, what can we do for improving lung function. So we're going to get into that here right now. So this video really will be perfect for anybody who themselves or a loved one or a family member, somebody close to them who needs to improve the health of the lung tissue. And specifically, we're going to be talking about glutathione. I made a video a few weeks back about why vitamins matter in keeping your immune system healthy and vigilant uh, during the winter time when viruses are very uh, problematic. And this chart I went over in that video just shows you that vitamin C, zinc, and selenium, those are absolutely necessary to produce and recycle and utilize glutathione. And it's just that simple. The, without these vitamins, you don't just get sick, you get injured from being sick. And the injuries your tissues receive from your own immune system can make your illness last a lot longer. It can even damage your lungs beyond repair. It can kill people. So vitamins aren't something, um, they're optional. They are literally the building blocks of life. So glutathione, if you haven't seen that video, it's called um, Coronavirus, Why Vitamins Matter. That's going to go over that in more detail. But today we're really going to focus on glutathione. It's abbreviated in the literature as GSH. And really just looking at some general research concepts here showing that um, you know your healthy cells have an enormous amount of glutathione and you you don't want your glutathione to be oxidized that's kind of like used uh, tissue paper you've already blown your nose it's kind of gross you can't really use it again you want glutathione to be fresh and clean you want to recycle it have it be reduced rather than oxidized so that's what this is talking about between the glutathione oxidized and reduced ratio. So healthy cells have a much larger amount of usable fresh glutathione ready to help you. Um, as we get inflamed, that ratio goes down. Here's another um, piece of research from the last few years just showing again in a healthy situation, you have a high amount of glutathione and you have a proper ratio between Oxid uh, redu reduced healthy fresh ox uh, glutathione and oxidized glutathione. Okay, so as you transition left to right along this arrow, the lungs progressively become more inflamed, the glutathione levels drop, your oxidized used glutathione levels go up, and the severity of the symptoms increase. I mean, without glutathione in your lungs, you can't breathe. You have so much inflammation, you just can't breathe. So that's not, not an option. And certain people out there have had, they've had COPD, they've been smokers, they've been exposed to smoke, they've been first responders, they've been soldiers, they've been in harm's way. I mean, there's, they've been in chemical factories, they've worked in dry cleaning stores for 30 years. I mean, you can hurt your lungs a lot of different ways. Basically, as you lose glutathione, you get lung damage and you have poor resistance to infections. Okay. And that's not just my opinion, that is, uh, that's the research. We love research. It tells us, if you ask the right question, you can really learn an enormous amount of information. So simply put, this chart shows you that this is amount of viral DNA, RNA, about amount of viral infection in the mice without glutathione and with glutathione. What do you notice? You notice that the, when glutathione is added to the mouse, and improved the glutathione levels in the lungs, they get four times the reduced level of infection. In other words, the placebo mouse has four times the amount of infection than the mouse with glutathione. If I had my choice, I'd rather be the mouse with low viral load rather than high, right? And it has to do with as we age, without proper care, 
We're not just going to miraculously age super healthy and get to the later decades of our life in perfect working order. If somebody gets there and they got lucky, well, you know, there's your one out of 10,000. But um, I don't want to trust luck. I want to do it with deliberate, careful, thought, thoughtful choices, right? So glutathione helps us get there by improving many, many aspects of our immune system. But specifically, it improves the Th1 response. And the Th1 response is really what's necessary to kill viruses. Th2 responses do a lot of damage to your tissues. Um, they don't really, they're, not that, they're not that effective at killing viruses. So we really want to get after the virus effectively and don't damage ourselves. And that's what glutathione helps us accomplish. The flu virus, not only does it lower glutathione, but it also, you know, we know that it affects the lungs. We know that since the beginning of time, since the first human on earth had a flu infection, uh, their lungs get challenged. And every year, out of the hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, maybe even millions actually, that die of the flu, 70% of those who pass away from the flu every year do it because their lungs are the organ that fails. So flus hurt our lungs. Our lungs are sensitive tissue. And, you know, we just need to pay attention to, to even when the 2009 H1N1 pandemic came through all over the world there were over almost 300,000 people who died and you know 69% of them died because their lungs were injured so this is something I kind of went over again in that first video about why vitamins matter so today rather than go into that more I want to talk about the solution that's available in the natural medicine world so the question is if I'm going to talk about glutathione, I'm going to talk about using a nebulizer to inhale it, is there any evidence to say that this even works, right? Well, this is a pretty recent study. It's about six months old from the Cochrane database. They pride themselves on being a pretty unbiased, um, well-respected group of scientists who, who can tell you if someone's blowing smoke at you or there's something to this idea. Um, and as it would turn out in regards to glutathione, inhaled and oral glutathione appear to improve lung function. So I'm just gonna let their word speak, right? They're telling us that if you can inhale glutathione, it, it appears that it improves lung function. Okay, so glutathione is pretty safe. You'll see some slides that show you it's not, there's not very high risk of having any adverse effects. Um, so the risk reward ratio is pretty high skewed towards benefiting from glutathione uh, directly inhaled into your lungs if you need support. So this is a list of what inhaled glutathione can do. It increases glutathione concentration. Obviously, it increases antioxidants. It improves the immune system. It decreases damage to the healthy cells. We need that. We don't want to have our healthy cells destroyed fighting a virus. That's where the scarring they're talking about comes from. It increases utilization of oxygen, which improves our everything, our brain, athletic performance, our muscle ability, and uh, you know even our immune system needs the oxygen to keep our body clean. And then it has effects on sinus improvement and uh, lung, just oxygen functions of the lungs in general. So this is not, again, something that is just coming out of the woodwork. There's been some research on nebulizing glutathione for quite some time. The main re area of research comes from the cystic fibrosis uh, point of view. These groups of people suffering with cystic fibrosis, they have problems with oxygen saturation, with lung function. So they're looking for natural things that can be used to improve their quality of life, just like we are. And this is a study from 2015 showing after three, six, and nine months, there was an improvement in uh, lung function, and they noticed that the inhaled glutathione improved the six-minute walking test in pediatric populations. So, and it was well tolerated. So glutathione's safe, and they're showing in the research that there's evidence that it, that it improves. So if we can agree that it improves things, then we need to think about how much do you take. I got to point out that I'm not giving you, the listener out there, medical advice. What I'm doing on this call is going over the research with you. You can see the slide and you can see with your eyes what I'm talking about. So I'm just, I'm just articulating and summarizing what the research shows. 
this is not medical advice and I would not recommend uh, anyone just grab a nebulizer and start doing this. You need to work with a health professional to get the, you know, to do it safely and to do it in the way that's going to benefit you the most. But researchers, again, this is back in 20, 2005, they found that a dose of around 66 milligrams of glutathione per kilogram of body weight was a good total daily dose. So they would separate that dose out three to four times throughout the day for a total load of 66 milligrams per kilogram. So you can see sometimes the dosage of glutathione has to be fairly high because glutathione is really found all over the place. It's really a common ingredient in our cells. Another summary of some studies, some of these studies use 600 milligrams once a day or 600 twice a day or 900 once a day or 1350 or the one I just shared with you, the 66 milligrams per kilogram. So there's various doses out there. Again, you work with a licensed health provider to get an idea of what the right dosage is for you or the person that you're concerned about because there's such a thing as too much and there's such a thing as too little. Even though this is a natural approach and it's well tolerated, again, you know, um, God is in the details, so we need to figure out exactly what's right for everybody else. Sometimes we don't have access to glutathione, and sometimes it makes sense to look at other compounds that might benefit people um, with the idea of causing, you know, causing no harm and, and um, using things naturally. So silver has been shown to be just a phenomenal antimicrobial. Now I'm not talking about making your own colloidal silver at home with a little, you know, a car battery and some distilled water and a couple of electrodes and drinking it every day until you turn blue. Um, media likes to poke fun at people who go too far in an effort to discourage others along the same path. Uh, but I would say the the research on silver now that's coming out is pretty, um, pretty rock solid. It just kills viruses, fungi, bacteria, and there doesn't seem to be a darn thing those bugs can do about it. They can't become resistant to it because the way silver attacks them. So this is just back from 2011 basically showing that silver usage reduces the infection in tissue, in cervical tissue, so um, for HIV. So if silver, you know, has an efficacy against HIV, it's probably going to have something positive to do against the flu as well. Another more, slightly more recent study just saying that silver nanoparticles behave as virucidal agents. Mm -hmm. They've studied this quite a bit. They've looked at uh, the different mechanisms. I'll go over that here in a second. But basically, silver is another, another legitimate way to help your immune system. And uh, we have some brands that we like. We have some dosing. I'm not, again, not comfortable just throwing that out there into the social media world. I feel like uh, that's something that takes place in a relationship between doctor and patient, but I'm just, if you're out there and you're curious about ways um, you can improve your family's health, there's someone you're worried about, definitely look at silver. Silver's a good tool. Um, and if you want to know which companies, which brands, you know, that's what we do for people. So silver nanoparticles, again, this is from just uh, about a year old now. Uh, it kills bacteria. So this is a picture just showing you how the nanoparticles and the silver ions get into the cell, they just, they just shred the bacteria. The bacteria really don't have any hope of surviving this. It just attacks them on many different levels. And it, and it comes in such a, a way to attack the bacteria that the bacteria, they can never become antibiotic resistant to silver, right? They don't, silver isn't one mechanism of attack. It's multi-spectrum. Um, and there's this idea, right? You're being born Maybe being born with a silver spoon in your mouth has a negative connotation, but if you think about it, and you used to have silverware made out of silver, um, you probably had a cleaner mouth, right? You suck on a silver spoon and you get silver nanoparticles in your mouth and it kills germs that may be some benefit to that. And you think about the, uh, the legends of vamp vampires as well. Um, sucking on your blood, maybe that's a parable or a metaphor for parasites. And vampires weren't too fond of silver bullets either. So you think about these words in our society, there's a reason why uh, this has stuck in our language, okay? We're just sort of rediscovering what apparently we've known a long time. So that's kind of the summary, guys, on this topic of glutathione nebulizing. Um, nebulizers are not expensive. Uh, in, in most states, to my understanding, you need a doctor's note. You know, I wish you could just buy it over the counter and, and maybe 
maybe that's possible in some areas, but uh, our patients, they have to take a doctor's letter and then you can get your hands on one. It's a nice tool to have around if people have weak lungs. And really the summary of what we're talking about is that glutathione is safe. Inhaled glutathione is effective for many different lung-related challenges. It increases oxygen saturation. It improves Th1 immune cell function, preventing severe complications from upper airway infections. It protects the lungs, right? And the lungs are the organ responsible for 70% of all influenza deaths. We have to take care of our lung tissue. Dosing is there somewhere between 600 milligrams per day up to 66 milligrams per kilogram. Um, and again, silver nanoparticles are effective against viruses, bacteria, and pathogens, and they can also be nebulized. So if you want to heal your lungs, protecting your lungs, it can be done naturally. You're going to need a nebulizer, as I said, and again, that's something for you to work with your provider on or work with us. We'll help you out. And you will need the correct dose and form of a glutathione and nano, and nano silver product for you and your family. You'll need a smart, caring, and motivated doctor as well to help you get the most from your inhaled glutathione and silver treatment. We work with people all over the United States from over 20 different countries, and we just, we've, we've established a reputation for getting results. Um, it's most of what I've learned, I've learned from my own patients. It's fun to help solve problems, and we would just encourage you, if you're interested in improving lung function and using this science uh, in your life, to contact us. So if you decide that uh, jumping on board with us would be something you're interested in, you just this is uh, the Beyond MTHFR website. I'll kind of minimize this so you can see it. All right There's the browser, Beyond MTHFR. Some of you have found this website before, and it provides a jump provides a jump for us to, uh, let's see, well, I got to maximize it. There we go. There's my buttons. So you hit this jump, become a patient. It takes you right over to our Red Mountain page. This is the, this is the onboarding area. If you would like our office's help in any of these areas uh, that you hear us talking about on YouTube, shameless self-promotion here. I love giving information away. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, I run a business. This is how I earn my earn my keep and keep a roof over my head. So I really hope this information uh, gets to somebody who needs to see it. I believe the lungs are an area we can really do a lot with naturally. And I think using nebulization, as we've seen in our practice with our patients, it's an awesome tool. So good luck out there. Let us know if you have any questions. And if you'd like to, like to reach out, please do. Thanks again. And everybody just have a safe and uh, productive rest of your day and week. Thank you very much.